So as I've been working on the starter kit, I'm really trying to add in a lot of like role based authorization checks. So for example, I'm logged in as a group owner, which gives me access to the settings tab where I can come in here, I can change the group visibility, I can update the group image. I'm not able to leave my own group. So there's a conditional that's hiding a leave button. And then also as an admin or an owner of this group, you can come in here and you can modify the the info page with this tip tap editor. And so let me show you just in case you don't understand, let me show you when I log in as a normal user. So just a normal member of a group, like a public user who joined your group, go to browse groups and actually let's go to your groups. I'm going to look at this one. So notice that this view looks a little bit different. We don't have an invite button anymore. We have a leave group. We don't have the tip tap editor down here. We just have a placeholder because I haven't worked on this yet, but I do plan to show the tip tap text here if you're just a normal person. But then if you notice here, there is no settings tab, right? So a lot of stuff changes based on if you're a normal member, if you are a admin, or if you're an owner. An owner has the ability to also just delete a group if they want to. So let's kind of walk through how I have this set up. And um, you guys can potentially copy this if you want your own app. So let's first look at an example. Let's look at the header. So let's go to groups header. And let's find something where I'm checking to see if you are like an admin or an owner. So let's look through here. We have this group header, which is called from a different page. But basically, this gets the current user session. And then down here, it's calling a membership button. So this is where a lot of the authorization checks are happening to know if we are uh, an owner or if we're just like a normal member. So the way I'm doing this is I get the session again. And again, this is wrapped in a memo. So like, it's not going to keep doing this uh, over and over again. I'm sorry, it's wrapped in a Next.js cache. So it might look unperformant that I'm calling this multiple times, but it is cached behind the scenes. And basically when the membership buttons, which is this section right here is loading, that's going to fetch to figure out, hey, am I an owner of this group? And so this is where we're going to fetch from the database to figure out our authorization access. So is group owner use case. Basically that passes the current authenticated user here and also the group ID. And if I look at this code, all that's doing is getting the full group from the database and then it checks the group dot user ID. So the group dot user ID is who actually created the group. And I check that against an authenticated user ID. Okay, so we have this nice use case helper function that we can basically use in our components, our React server components or our server actions to run some business logic to check if we should be seeing this uh, membership um, button or not. And so using that is group owner Boolean, I will show an invite button so that you can invite other members. And then I'll show a leave group and join group button based on if a user is actually part of a group or not. So this is another Boolean I need to talk about is in group. Basically, I check to see if the current authenticated user is part of the group because you have the ability to join and leave different groups. So I need to go and check the database to see, hey, do you actually have group membership? So I go ahead and just say, you know, get the membership using the authenticated user in the group. If something comes back and this is defined, then we know that they are a part of that group. And I basically also check if they're a group owner because that's stored a little bit different in my database. So if they're either a group owner or they are part of that memberships table, then that would be true as well. And then that's how I know if I need to show a leave button or a join button. Okay, so that's kind of how the role based authorization is working in my application. I think there's another section I can kind of show you, which is the editor. So let's go to the info page. And again, this tip tap editor should only show up if you're an owner or an admin of the group. So how does this work? Well, again, when this page loads, I just go ahead and get the current user session. And then I pass it to a use case that checks to see if that current user should be an admin or an owner with that group ID. So if you look at this code, it's pretty simple. All it does is calls a helper function. That one again, just gets the group and then also gets the membership and it checks that, Hey, either you're an admin or you're an owner. And then that returns a true. And then that's how I can dynamically toggle if this rich text editor shows up or not. The last thing I do want to talk about is this memberships table. So to know if you are part of a group or not, I have this separate table that keeps track of the user ID and it associates that user ID with a group ID. And then I also have a role attached to that, right? So you can have multiple users attached to a group and each user can be either an admin or they can be a member. 
and then the owner is stored separately in the actual like you know the, the logic is kind of derived here so if the user id that is currently trying to access some stuff is the user id on the group then they are the owner but for the membership and admin stuff that's just a separate role column that's stored in this the memberships table and that's how i'm kind of getting that all set up so if you guys liked any of the things I talked about, all this code will be included in the WDC Starter Kit. Go to WDCStarterKit.com and go subscribe to the newsletter if you want to get a notification when this stuff is actually live. If I ever get around to finishing this, it's actually turning out to be a lot more work than I thought it would be. Um, but yeah, go check it out. And hope you guys enjoyed this little overview of how I like to do authorization in my Next.js applications. Have a good day and happy coding.